and I know that we would be prone to say, well, I would be the least likely one. I'm, I can't do that. What God's asking me to do, I can't do that. I'm not able to do that, or whatever it is. And we see ourselves, oh, I'm the least likely one. But now, is that really true? Be honest. Most of us here are pretty capable. Most of us could do just about anything. I mean, really, there's some things we can't do, but there's a lot of things you can do. I don't, if we're honest with ourselves, I don't think we see ourselves as the least like one. It might be more a case of the don't want to's. I don't, I don't want to do that. Just don't think I will. So maybe this is not for those of us who just tell ourselves I'm the least likely one. Maybe not. Maybe, maybe it really is for the least likely ones. The people who, who grew up thinking, well, I really don't have anything to offer. I don't have a good education and I'm not very pretty or handsome and been beat down by the system. Not very smart. Maybe this is intended for the really least likely ones. Well, I don't know. What category do you fall into? Saying, well, I'm, I'm not capable of doing that. I am the least likely one. Or the, I don't really want to. But you know what? God will not be stopped. God chose the least likely one that time, and God will choose the least likely one again. So is it us? Only you can answer that. Amen and amen. We will stand and say together the words of the affirmation of faith. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he arose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen.
may be seated. I invite the ushers to come and receive our offering. pray. Gracious and loving Lord, we know that everything, every good and perfect gift comes from above. Everything we have is a gift from you. So we pray now that you will receive these gifts and tithes and offerings that we bring back. Help us to use them for your will and your purpose in this place. For it's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. The names of the people for whom we pray are listed on the back of the bulletin, and I'm happy to say that there are no new names on that list. That's a good thing. That, uh, that's a good thing. But you will remember these whose names are listed there and their needs. 
Please take a few moments to pray silently before we pray together. Let us pray. Gracious and holy God, it is right and fitting and good that before we come before you with the prayers of our own needs, the prayers for others, the prayers for ourselves, it is right and fitting and good that before we come before you with these prayers, we come before you with thanksgiving. We have only to look around us to see the many blessings that we are given. More than we can name during this time. But we thank you for the beauty of this day and for the beauty of this place. I thank you for these people, for this faith, for their faithfulness to you and their faithfulness to the church. We are grateful for the country in which we live, the freedoms that we have. And we are grateful for the chance to pray. In the ways that we each pray, some aloud, some formal prayers, in the way that we each pray, We thank you for that gift of prayer coming before you, making known to you the secrets of our own hearts, which we know that you already know. But now we come to you on behalf of others, these whose names that are listed, others we know whose names are not there, We pray for our church. We pray for guidance as we search for a new youth director. We pray for our country. We pray for the world, for our leaders, those who make decisions in our behalf. And we pray that you will grant them and us wisdom and courage for the living of these days. Hear us as we have prayed in silence, and as we pray together now the prayer that you taught your disciples to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
have some visitors today. I forgot to point that out a minute ago. So if you see one of them that you know is a visitor, please give them a good, warm First Presbyterian welcome. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of the Father and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you on this day and forevermore. Amen.